This is the second video in the series about accessibility to commercial areas. If you have not seen the previous videos on parking lots of malls, maybe it's a good idea to check it out after finishing this video. The two videos are not related, and they are about the opposite topics. Ever wondered why some buildings are adjacent to the sidewalks, while some others are so far apart? Do you like to shop in a store like this? Or like this? Let's discuss it. If you chose the gigantic parking lot designs in front of the stores, don't worry, I don't judge you for your opinion and option. The only thing I judge is the car centrism that wrecks cities apart. The stores on the left all have something in common. Their doors are located adjacent to the sidewalks. This means you can access these shops while walking, biking or taking public transit. These stores are typically located on urban streets, usually at the urban core of the city. On these streets, you usually see parking spaces on the street or behind the stores, leaving the door so easy to access for everyone. For nearby residents, this design creates a friendlier and walkable environment, making living in such neighborhoods feasible without an automobile. These streets are designed at a human scale, with plenty of sidewalk spaces for walking and street vendors, transit stop located near the front doors of the stores, and plenty of other features that make them more lively like benches, artifacts, public arts, information boards, and theme painted crosswalks. All features of these designs facilitate an environment that promotes social interactions, recreational aesthetics, and local information. In some urban streets, the ban of cars or extreme reduction of speed limit was even imposed to further reduce the noise pollution and encourage active transportation as well as other human activities. But as we move forward from these design, we encounter this, to which I called the monstrosity of city design. The suburban commercial areas are the complete opposite of the urban commercial areas. They are desolate, giant, separated, disconnected, and each of them has an oversupplied amount of parking spaces in front of them. It is so hard to find any commercial buildings that do not have parking spaces in front of them in the suburban areas, from strip malls to convenience stores to supermarkets and even restaurants. All have a parking lot with several lots in front of them and giant signs that are made for the cars on the roads instead of the pedestrians. This fundamentally made everyone have to drive to such places, and if you don't, you're screwed. These places are designed on a car scale and not human scale at all. Why, suburban commercials, please give us an answer. Why would you do this to us? Suburban areas were developed mostly after World War II, which means they have an opportunity to become better than the urban cores. But planners of the 50s and the 60s defined better as having an easy access to by cars to all the essential locations. Having a car was considered convenient and preferred by the vast majority of society, thus everyone thrived to own one. During this time, cars and highways were heavily subsidized. Public transit soon became unpopular, as so many streetcar agencies ceased to exist in the US and Canada. The long list of car-centric policies and design were implemented, namely minimum parking requirement and single detached housing. Minimum parking requirements are law requiring new buildings to include a fixed number of off-street parking spaces based on assumed demand for parking generated by the building's use. This means that firm will have to calculate the number of customers visiting them every day. The larger the firm, the more customer they got, thus the more minimum parking spaces they require. This policy has become a non-negligible part of any blueprints in the 50s, and parking lots were required to be placed in front of buildings to accommodate the convenience of automobile shopping. Thus, all these suburban malls and commercials are so far apart from the street, this is practically forcing everyone, from the elderly to the disabled to minimum paid workers, to own a car just to participate in activities at these locations. At the strip malls, this walk is less painful than at big malls because they have fewer customers, therefore there's fewer lots. Some stores within a mega mall or a super center are also placed closer to the street and sidewalks, so good for them. In urban core areas, this process almost happened 
when Robert Moses proposed the idea of urban renewal, which will be the idea of a future video. Many buildings in downtown and major urban core of several North American cities have been bulldozed for the minimum parking requirements. But thankfully, Jane Jacobs was the MVP to save the day. This historical and commercial values of the urban cores are therefore preserved, and citizens and tourists can enjoy walking to these urban stores that have their doors located adjacent to a sidewalk or transit stop. The concept of window shopping is also encouraged with this store adjacent to street concept because when you walk, you are observing the street at a much slower speed and that allows you to time to discover local and small business that you might have never heard of despite driving through these locations multiple times. Placing parking lots in front of the stores is inefficient, dangerous, and expensive. Having stores not separated from the street increases walkability, accessibility, and creates an inclusive environment that allows social and cultural capital to thrive. The street becomes more lively with more people, not only through the interactions, but also the exhibition of street concerts, fairs, vendors, and window shopping. However, if the volume of traffic and speed is not restricted, the level of noise pollution and air pollution can be an issue, especially to vendors closer to the street. Moreover, if these urban streets only contain commercials and offices that are active during working hours, then the level of safety and comfort will be significantly decreased for pedestrians at night when they are closed as the volume of pedestrian traffic is reduced. To solve this problem, mixed-use zoning should be incorporated, ensuring a diverse environment in types of business, housing, and people. With the rising population and housing demands, cities are in another transition period with many opportunities and challenges to become more sustainable in the future. Changes are never too late to implement, so will we one day be able to see these gigantic spaces be utilized and designed for people? Great street designs will benefit both people and businesses, and the best street designs will increase the value of institutions and commercial areas located on them. But till that day comes, we're still left with this desolate, inefficient, and unwelcoming parking lots in front of the suburban stores. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.